I wanted to go over a few things here. Um, well, first, before I start, I wanted to mention that this deck is going to be out for, should be out tomorrow. It's being processed right now with US game, um, with my, my playing cards publishing company. And it's a deck of uh, standard size deck is like this. You can see these are larger cards. What I did with these cards, I, I might have, you might have seen a YouTube on this before. What I did with this is I took and I put keywords around each of the cards. I'm using my Marseille deck. And um, there's a magician. And I put keywords around each each card, allowing you to see the card's meanings a, while you're looking at the card. This is what's also in my books, the way I teach. But um, I thought having a deck of cards that way would be a, a good idea as well. So that it comes with a um, comes with a couple of these instruction cards in there as well. You think I would have this all prepared before I started this thing, but I didn't. Uh, here it is. Okay. Zero card meetings on one card and my Celtic cross on the other. And each one of these cards is, and then I also have my, the back of the cards is my tessellation that I did there. So it's pretty cool as far as the backs of the cards. I think they look, um, See if I can focus that a little bit better. Well, anyway, that's what they look like. So each one of the each one of the seventy eight cards has a uh, a group of key words around it, showing the meaning of the card. And this, what key words allow you to do is drift off in the meanings that are gonna work well for your particular reading at the time you're doing the reading. It helps you um, helps you see meaning that would be helpful to the client as you read the cards. Now, if you're not experienced tarot reader, I would suggest having something like this to start out with would be really helpful to you to get meanings for the cards in your head. And um, if you are, though, you might like these as well, just for the fact that it could increase range as far as what the cards can mean um, for you. So anyway, it's going to be out there. They're processing that right now. It should go fine. And um, I've been wanting to put this out for a while. I just haven't got around to, having, have do, to doing it yet. So I'm doing it today. And I thought I would put that in this YouTube as well. I want to tell you about that. It's called the Tarot of Marseille Keywords Edition. It's the name of the deck. And it's a large deck. Again, you can see the difference in size compared to a regular, a regular tarot deck. It's a little bit bigger. They still work. And I think they'll work well. I was going to make them the standard size deck, but I thought the type would look better if I went with this larger size. So it's, it's smaller than the giant Rider weight deck, if you, if you know that deck. It's uh, smaller than that, but it's bigger than the regular standard tarot deck. Nice stock, good quality, and I think you'll like it. Also wanted to mention, I am working on my next book. Uh, I think it's going to be called Tarot, uh, Mastering the Craft. And um, it's going along well now. This is my notes for what I'm going to do with the book. I see how it's carefully planned. All uh, very detailed and nicely done. <laughs> this works good for me doing it like this. Outlining it doesn't work. When you're trying to create something, outline doesn't work. Mapping it out like this works out very well. I can take this, put it here, this over here. I can move this around. 
And so if you're trying to create something, mapping it out works better. So anyway, that should be out sometime early 2023. And it's gonna be a book on application. And that's what I'm working on now. So there won't be any, any material in there as far as card meanings go. Uh, most, most books on the tarot have a, a lot written about the meanings of the cards, including my books. But with my, my work, I always try to have a lot of uh, detail, a lot of information on my books about the application, which is why most, my, most of my books will have about 50 pages going over maybe three different card spreads, why they work and, um, and how they work. I also have chapters on why the tarot works itself anyway, which is part of the application. So now that we understand why the tarot works as far as the application goes, I thought it'd be good to have a book strictly on that and showing um, what is good to have in a card spread, what you're looking to achieve and uh, why, why it's so useful. And also what isn't necessary in a card spread. And um, a lot of the things we do with card spreads may not really be that necessary. At least I don't think so. My work is based on about 30 years of professional tarot reading. And I've been involved with the tarot for longer than that. And um, so it's, um, I know it works and I know um, it could be helpful to, um, to you understanding why it works. Tarot is a tool. And I, like I said, I think we spend too much time looking at the deck and saying, um, I wanna learn these cards. I wanna learn these cards. And so we, we focus a lot on the deck. And um, really, it's good to know the cards. It's important to know what you're doing with these, what, what the cards are. But that's just a small part of it, really. And what's really important is what you're doing with these cards. It's almost like if you were learning something like auto mechanics, you could spend a lot of time learning about the tools, but you really need to know how a car works to know what's wrong with this car and, and what you need to do about it. And so, um, yeah, the tools are important and the tarot is a tool. And it's, it's, it could be very confusing if you spend too much time just focusing on the tool instead of what you're doing with the tool. And I think that that's um, something now we can look at now that we understand why this application is so effective, which is what I go over in bare bones tarot and essential tarot, and even in genius of the tarot and radical tarot, explaining for the first time why this system is works, the tarot cards. And um, I think now that we can understand that, it makes it really easy to take a look at this application in ways we haven't done before. So that's what this book is going to be about. Again, my other books go into it, but this book is going to be strictly that. My other books go into the cards themselves as well. And this book will not have any cards in it. At least I'm not planning on that at this point. And really the tarot, the tarot itself can get confusing when you look at all the different decks and how they look differently. And meanings of the cards can be shifting in certain sources from one source to the other as well. And I, I wanted to show a deck here that I thought would be a good, good example of that. This is a deck, I just found this deck in my shelf. I don't know when I got this deck. I've seen it on the shelf for a number of, uh, you know, now, now and then I see it there. I don't ever look at it, but it's from 1981. 
and it's a. Uh, um, I never used the deck. Never, I never used it. Instructions and the cards. But the um, what was interesting with this deck is it's a deck of tarot cards. It says right there, Allen Tarot deck. And it's um, 78 cards, tarot. So if you're used to a Rider Waite deck or a Marseille deck or any other really tarot deck out there, and then you pick these cards up, you'll say, whoa, what's this? And the reason I'm saying that is because you'll see totally different images. Like here's the lover's card, number six. It has nothing to do with um, what you would normally see. And it's called, uh, I got it upside down here, let me see. But one side of the car shows a, a cruise ship and the other side of the car shows the Sphinx. It's the lovers, number six of the major arcana. Here we have 22, no, no, I'm sorry, 17 of the major arcana. And here we have, again, just totally different images. There's nothing saying reversed or right side up. It's just images that are different. And 17 is the uh, st star card. Nothing to do with that. Here's the hermit. And there's nothing there. It's just a city. And again, here we have a, a cruise ship on the other side. So these cards here are totally different than what you would normally see. And as far as the pips go, they're using a regular playing card pips with no numbers on them. So this is the eight of cups or the eight of hearts, whatever you want to call it. Cups and hearts are the same thing. And you have to count them actually. Here's a seven. And I like that type of a style for playing cards. The old style, this is just old style where now you have playing cards where you can take them and fan them like this and you could just look in the upper corner and see what the card is the old cards you had to look at the whole card to figure it out here's the ace of clubs and i like that look and i don't know where the, i got this deck from but i've had it for a while never used it but it's interesting it's an interesting deck so none of the majors look the same and the court cards don't even look the same this must be the knight of pentacles the king of cups And I really don't know. I'd have to look at the rest of them and see. Or I'd have to look at the instructions. The Queen of Wands. So they have a new unique look to them. But these are tarot cards. And you can, and, and so the same amount of cards, just a whole different look than what we're used to seeing. And um, and that just shows you that you can do anything you want with the images of these cards. You could read professionally with this deck if you wanted to. Or you could be, be professional with this deck if you wanted to. Or any other deck. They're all different. Greer deck, uh, Aquarian deck. Some of them are similar, but they're different. And it's nice to know you can... It, it's all right to have... Uh, the, the, so the, focusing on the image isn't really... Uh, important i mean yeah the image can show you something but it doesn't you, you don't have to understand it it's what you're seeing at the time you're doing the reading something's going to come out on you and say this helps me with this reading so trying to understand important symbolism for each card 
I think is going too deep into the tarot for what we're using it for. And I think that that can help hurt you when you're trying to learn because I think you're concentrating too much on trying to learn every detail about something that's not going to be consistent from one deck to another. Where if you're learning the other, if you're learning other things about the tarot, you realize that you can, you can read any deck of tarot cards. That makes it easy to go from a, a Rider deck to a Marseille deck, or something like this, or a Thoth deck, or any of the other decks that are out there. They all work. I'm sure there's pro readers out there that are using this deck. I'm sure they read just as good as anybody else. It doesn't make any difference. 78 random cards giving you ideas. That's all. That's what you have. And again, I think we spend too much time looking deeply into these cards. It's really easy to think that way. It's a strong illusion. If you, if you have a deck of tarot cards and you say, okay, I want to learn these cards. I want to learn how to use these cards. So Morgan Greer. And so you're holding these cards in your hand and you're saying, I want to learn these cards. And you're focusing on the cards. But it's not where the where the, the magic isn't in the cards. Magic's in how they're used, the application. So you can look at these cards and study them till the cows come home. It doesn't make any difference. You want to be good at, at reading tarot cards. You have to understand what you're doing with them and why it works is really very helpful. That's what I've strove to, to write about and explain. So that's why this next book is going to be strictly on the application itself. And I think it's going to be a, um, a valuable thing to have because I don't know of any other source out there that's written a book of tarot cards strictly talking about application. Usually they're going into it a little bit, but um, most of the book will be on the cards themselves. I'm looking forward to doing this. It's gonna be fun. I'm having a good time putting things together right now with it. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. A good analogy with that though, is as far as learning a tool, this is, like I said, this is a tool. And when you're a card reader, this is your tools of the trade right here, a deck of cards. And, um, but I know a lot of card readers that stopped using cards and they're just talking now. They're just psychics. My wife included Linda. She doesn't use cards and she never did use tarot cards. She always used playing cards and she read better than anybody else I know. So you don't need to have tarot cards. You just need to be able to know how to read. And, and, um, and that's important. And so I think it's um, looking into the application is, is key. And I'll be doing YouTubes about it too, but I have been anyway. But um, things like the where you laid the cards down in order or a pattern are not really that uh, important. What's important is what the positions mean. What are they supposed to represent? It's supposed to be some helpful aspect of the question you're looking into. And, um, and that's what makes the reading, what kind of questions you're asking. If you're asking good questions, you'll have good answers. Or if you're asking questions that don't really aren't really relevant to the reading, who cares what your answer is? So the application is key. And it's a strong illusion to think that 
I want to learn these cards to be a good reader and looking into each little detail about the cards. I thought it was interesting. I just had um, somebody mention the, my Swiss deck. The Swiss deck, this is something I never even noticed. I've been using this deck, I don't know, for year, 50 years. I don't know how many readings I've done with this deck. This is the original Swiss right here, in case you've, you might have seen it out there. And, um, and all I did was reproduce what they had as far as their images. So here we have the Roman numeral, numeral settings were not consistent. Here we have, that's the nine of um, swords. So we got a one or an IX for nine. Here we have the nine of cups. And that's a V I I I I. So they're not consistent in the way they numbered their Roman numerals, depending on the card. More than likely, they did this for space reasons. They didn't have enough um, room here to, uh, to put this type of numerical setting on there on this. There just wasn't enough space, so they did it that way. That's probably why there's a difference. And a lot of the other cards are the same way. They're just not consistent with their, the way they did the Roman numerals. And I've never noticed that. Does it make any difference? Not really. No, it doesn't make any difference at all. But something I've never noticed. And this woman pointed it out on my, one of my last Zoom meetings. I said, son of a gun, I've never even noticed that. And I thought that was interesting. By the way, my Swiss deck is back. And now, this is, this is a standard Swiss deck. And you can see, compared to other decks, it's not as big. It's smaller. And uh, so it's not a standard size deck. My Swiss deck is now standard size. I made it the size of a regular deck. Also, something else you might want to notice on my decks is um, these older decks like the Swiss came out in the 1800s. And you'll see that the, the borders are square. But the card has a round edge to it. The borders are square. And that's when this, when this deck first came out, they didn't make cornered, uh, rounded corners on their cards. They were square cut cards. And when they got better at doing those cards, they were able to round the corner up, which means it's easier for wear that way. Same with a Marseille deck. You look at an old Marseille deck, the borders are square. But the card is round, round cornered. So my Swiss deck has rounded borders to match the shape of the card. Same with my Marseille decks. I did the same thing with the Marseille decks. Small little detail like that. But anyway, getting back to what I was saying about the Swiss deck, this woman pointed out that detail. Never, I never noticed it. And I got a kick out of it. It was so cool to see something I've never even seen before. And I thought that was interesting. And I remember myself looking at um, my, my Marseille deck rounded corners, same way. Rounded border, I mean. But I remember looking at the Rider weight deck years back. And I was looking at the high priestess. This is the giant Rider weight deck. I was talking about the, my deck, my, my new um, keywords deck is smaller than the giant. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. There's the giant writer, and here's my, my size for those keyword cards. So they are smaller than the giant. 
But um, I remember looking at this card, the high priestess. And I was reading somewhere in the Bible, somewhere, and not in the Bible itself, but an article or some, somebody who's translating the Bible. And on the, on the Rider Waite deck, she's sitting in the Temple of Solomon. And that's Boaz and Jachin or Jehashin. I forgot what the names, how they pronounce those pillars. But these pillars are at the entrance of the Temple of Solomon. And you walk through there and you walk to the back of the temple. And there's a pomegranate curtain in the back of the temple. And behind that temple, or behind that curtain, is the Holy of Holies. It's called the Holy, Most Holy of Holies. And that's where the Ark of the Covenant was stored in the Temple of Solomon. So she's sitting in that temple. And then and, and she has that curtain that behind her, which means she behind her, I guess, is the Holy of Holies. And she's sitting there. But I read this article that they were talking about where these two Boaz and Jacob were, were situated as you were walking into the temple. And Boaz was on the right, was the right pillar as you're walking in, and Hashim was on the left. Well, that's reversed of here, which means if you're, you're actually in the temple looking out, and you're actually behind the, the curtain of pomegranates with her and looking at each other, or this card was done wrong. I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe it doesn't make any sense. This car, they had these two pillars switched. And um, I think I actually called U.S. Games about it. And they didn't do anything. They're not going to, you know, they're, they listened to me. But, um, but that was years ago. And, I, and really, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. The Marseille deck didn't even have, well, it was the lady Pope in the Marseille deck. I wasn't a high priestess. And she doesn't have the, she's not sitting at the Temple of Solomon. So this is something Wade decided to do. And it's not important where, what, where, the, where you're at in this temple or what these the two pillars are doing. It's the high priestess. That's all. That's all you got to know. But you could overthink it real easy. And I'm just as guilty of it as anybody else. I've done it when I was younger. I looked at these cards and try mm -hmm. to fine tune, look under a, under a microscope and um, study the symbolism. Did it do me any good? I, I'm glad I, I was fun to do. It's interesting to read about, but I never used any of it. And uh, you won't either. <laughs> So don't worry about that. Focus more on the application. That's what's important. Whatever deck you're using is fine. Whatever deck you like, it's fine. And if you like this deck today and you like this deck tomorrow, that's fine too. Eventually you probably stick with one. But even today I go back and forth to different decks. And uh, right now I'm using my Swiss. Right now I'm using this. And uh, fine, and maybe next week I'll be doing a, a different deck. But um, they're all good. They all work as long as there's 78 of them. Focus on the application, what you're doing with those cards. That's where your key is. And that's what's going to make the readings good, no matter how well you know these cards and how well you know the details of the symbolism of this particular deck or that particular deck. It's not important. It's how you find ways to translate those cards. How you get ways to get those cards to generate ideas to you. That's what's important. Anyway. I just thought I'd share those thoughts and um, our next uh, Zoom meeting is going to be the, the 28th. 
Our next Zoom meeting is going to be the 28th of June. It's Tuesday. And um, all welcome. Hope I see you there. Go to tarotmaps.com. I'll have a link down below. Just go to the tarot gatherings in the menu. And you can um, just join right here. So anyway, I hope you like this. Keep throwing cards. We'll talk soon. Bye. Thank you.